producers how are you guys doing today in this video I want to talk about the most important sound design technique to use and that is envelope shaping using the volume really what this means is to use the attack the decay the sustain and the release on every sound not just synths or not just instruments but use it on your drums as well and even on your 808s just everything and I'm just gonna break down what each of these mean and what each control can create first of all we have the attack that's like the start of your sound that's the the beginning if I pull up a synth right now I'm just gonna use operator since I'm in Ableton but every synth has these controls as you can tell down here there's attack decay sustain and release now this first one is called attack this is the beginning of your sound so in this example if I were to turn it up it creates like this slope this is just a visual for you guys to under understand what's going on but what this means is that the sound is slowly going to fade in over time the next two are intertwined but they have separate names what the sustain is, is it's the volume at which you want the sound to stay at when you're pressing a note or when you're holding a note. So if I were to hold a note right now, it would just go on forever. But if I turn down the sustain all the way down, the note just fades out. And we have another visual representation here. The sound just fades out like this. Now where the decay comes in is it basically controls how long it takes for the sound to reach that sustain level. So this is really good for making plucky sounds. But uh, let's go ahead and reset all of this. The final control is the release. Now this one is the most easy to understand for most producers. And I know this is basic stuff right now, but bear with me because I'm going to show you guys how this applies to mixing scenarios and also to just overall sound design. But let's go back to the release. The release is the tail of your sound. And this is how long you want it to fade out after you let go of the note. After you release the note. So if I turn this up significantly. We're getting this very long tail and I'm letting go of these notes but it continues to fade out now let's go ahead and go over different sound design uses of these controls so for example with the attack if I turn it up significantly and then I also turn up the release a lot I get a pad sound It doesn't matter what waveform I'm using or what sample that I'm using to play these notes. As long as the attack and the release are super high, you're going to get a pad version of that sound. You're still getting that pad sound. I can keep turning up the attack as well. And essentially, the more the attack the higher the attack is, the softer the sound is going to come in. I mean, most of you guys probably already know that, but knowing that the attack can be used to create a softer sound can help your sound design because now you know when you want to go for a soft texture, you go to the attack and you turn it up. And that leads us to our next control, which is the decay and the sustain. If I turn on the sustain and I have a very fast decay, it's going to be very plucky. Now notice we're keeping the same waveform, but we're getting completely different sounds. And this applies to everything. Like, even if I load up a string sample right now, as you can tell down here, we have the same exact controls. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. Now notice how this sound sounds. Turn it up a little bit as well. 
Now notice what happens if we turn down the sustain and the decay. It gets very plucky. Let me start it a little bit later as well. So we went from this very smooth string sound to a plucky sharp string sound, all with just the decay and the sustain. So let's go back to that synth. This is like a, a pluck sound, like we said. If you turn up the decay a little bit more, it becomes like a key sound. The final type of sound you can create is a combination of decay and attack. You can create a swell sound. So let me go ahead and get a saw wave because it is more familiar to most people when it comes to swells. But if I turn up the attack a lot, and then I keep that sustain low at the end, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a, a swelling sound. As you can tell, it goes up and then it suddenly cuts off. That's called a swell. When I hear this type of sound, I think of a flume type sound design. Those are the four controls. Now, that was just how to use them in a synth. But like I said, I would recommend to use it in your drums, in your 808s even. Any type of sound can benefit from this and it seriously improves your mixes when you do this. Now in the case of drums, what will happen is that you can make your drums tighter using the decay and the sustain. Let me just use some regular drums. So the most significant change is probably gonna happen on the snare. Listen to this snare right now. It sounds pretty weak in my opinion. It has a cool sound to it, but it sounds weak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna start it a little bit later in the sound. And now I'm gonna go to classic mode, which has um, the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. What I can do to make this sound a little bit tighter and sharper, actually a lot tighter and a lot sharper, is I can turn on the sustain and turn up the decay a little bit. We're getting a little bit of a sharper sound. So as you can tell, this is before. And this is after. It's a lot sharper. Now, what I recommend when you turn down the sustain is you make up for that lack of volume by turning up the overall volume. And overall, we're getting a sharper sound. Now, you can do the same thing, obviously, with like some hi-hats. I can make this hi-hat a lot tighter by turning down the release, I mean not the release, the sustain and the decay. Sounds a lot tighter. As you can tell, that's how it sounds after all the shaping. But before all those, uh, all the shaping, it would sound like this. Let me turn back down the volume. And then after, it's a lot tighter, a lot sharper. Now, in the grand scheme of things, when you do this to a lot of sounds and a lot of drums and you shape them perfectly to how you like it, it's gonna tremendously improve your mixes. The most amazing use of this is with 808s, in my opinion. It's not the most amazing, but it's very significant because everyone wants a punchy bass sound. Most people add punch to a bass using a kick, but 
you can use this technique to make your 808s more punchy as well. First of all, let's listen to this 808 how it originally was. If I turn on the sustain now, and I turn down the decay to a reasonable amount, and I make up for that sustain by turning up the volume just a little bit. We're getting a punchier 808. And that's just because the start of the sound is louder than the tail and the rest of the sound. So th that's how you would use decay, sustain, attack, and all of that using drums. Normally I don't touch the attack with drums because drums are all about the transients and having a sharp um, beginning, like having a, a punchier start. Or in the case of snares, having a sharper snare. So by turning up the attack, you're actually making your sound softer. So that's why I usually don't touch the attack when it comes to drums. But um, everything else is fair game. If you wanna do some creative stuff, then feel free to touch the attack and make some interesting sound design um, with your drums or with your bass. Just be creative. However you want to do it is fair game. But um, hopefully uh, this was inspiring and it helped some of you guys and uh, it will improve some of you guys' sound design and your mixes because a lot of people know about these controls on synths. It's very simple to use but it's a huge deal in terms of your mix as well. And that's why I tend to use these controls on most of my sounds, um, unless the sound already sounds good right off the bat, which is not always. So other than that, um, I think I've covered everything. I just, I don't wanna forget anything. So let me think. You can also use this with samples. So if I go ahead and get like a, a sample, I, I have the, uh, the decay here at the end and I have the attack. If I keep chopping a sample and I turn up the attack like this, I can create a more dynamic sound. It's really important and it changes the overall sound of your mix. I swear to God, I swear. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then subscribe. Let me know what other tutorials you guys wanna see, what questions you guys have, and I'll try to answer it in a video. And other than that, leave a like and thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.